What's up, everybody? It's your coach. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back to everything. I'm doing all three into one. Professionals say, don't do this. Make everything specific for everything. But because I'm operationally lazy, I only do it one time. I'm going to bust it out everywhere. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, I still love you. Today's episode, today's topic, a very popular one. This is my talk in the beautiful city of Grapevine, Texas. I got asked this question, which I get asked a lot. Coach, I'm stuck. What do I do? I'm stuck. I don't know where to go. What do I do? I say in 2022, especially there's no reason to get stuck. You just got to keep attacking. So because of that, we're just going to keep attacking. A little update on the show as I'm operationally lazy, but I love attacking. So I got to keep going, getting a lot. Let's get that out of there. It's getting a lot of offers on the show. A lot of people wanting to sponsor, a lot of people wanting to do stuff here, there, this, that. When we sign on the dotted line, I'm going to let you guys know, but there's a lot of stuff going on. So I want to thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for supporting. Thank you guys for the love. If you're in the podcast, this is the audio version. Crush this. The YouTube. Crush this. And my Instagram people, hope you enjoy this too. How not to be stuck in 2022 and what I would do. If this video gives you any kind of value, any kind of motivation, and it helps you in any way, Please subscribe, please follow, give me a like button, link below, comment, comment what you like to see, comment on anything, comment any advice you need on anything. A lot of stuff's happening in 2022 that I'm super excited about. Here we go. Grapevine. This was in December. Got asked the question, what to do when you're stuck? In 2022, you can't be stuck. Let's go. <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, I mean, personally, coach, what do you do when you get stuck? Feel like you have nobody to turn to because there's nobody that does what you do. I had the biggest person in baseball sit in front of me, biggest commentator in baseball right now sit in front of me and told me, oh my God, you crushed it. What you did in New York with Rawlings sat in front of me and we went to breakfast in Coconut Grove and he goes, how would you like to do, because he got inspired by hearing me, what you did at Rawlings, how would you like to do that for ESPN? And I'm brand new into the game. I was like, oh. <gasps> With a daughter, with a daughter just born. And I'm saying, I'm not getting paid for nothing. Everything is extra, extra crazy work. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. He goes, I have a plane. You don't have to worry about that. I have a hotel. You don't have to worry about that. I think you do amazing. The winter meetings. Blah, blah, blah. I go, that's it. I'm going to be on ESPN. Oh, I'm, I'm set. Finally, somebody sees it. The guy in front of me goes, let me tell you how I roll. Picks up the phone and calls. He goes, I'm going to call my general manager at ESPN. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I told them. Outside, I was like this. Inside, I was like, please pick up the phone. Please pick up the phone because I know how this works. I know how this works. I've seen it so many times. What happens? Nobody picks up the phone. The guy puts the phone down. He finishes the meal. I pay for the meal. The guy's a multimillion. I pay for the meal so the guy can see it. It ain't about me. I don't want any handouts. I help him because I gave him my word with two posts on social media. I posted on whatever and I never heard from this guy again. What was the positive out of that? Because I'm, I'm in the business of positivity. I'm not in the business of views. I'm not in the business of likes. I'm not in the business of people liking me. I'm in the business of positivity. The positive thing was that he said I could do it. So what did I do? I think almost instinctually. It's built inside me instinctually. I called up my boy, who's the president of the Orange Bowl Committee. I go, you got to get me to, to access to the Orange Bowl. Because I want to interview players, coaches, whoever. I didn't tell you this, which I forgot, because so many things happen, man. I get there, and right before the thing, I have all access pass, and I'm walking around with a camera, which is the beauty of today that didn't happen, which is why I stepped in my car. I'm walking around with a camera, and I'm grabbing people. So who's the first person I get? Steve Spurrier. Coach, that specialness that you've had, that you had it all your life, it's something you developed through time, of just being that yourself, man, very charismatic. Where did you think you got that? Because they had Florida versus Virginia. And they got two alumni kind of like to represent them. So they got Steve Spurrier to represent Florida. And then I get Tiki Barber. One of the best that ever did it. Tiki competing this day and age now. 
What advice do you have for the kids that want to be in your position? And then you know who I get that I see walking around that they almost kicked me out, but I get them anyway? Dan fucking Marino. <laughs> Our guy. For us, Dan Marino's a pope. Miami? You kidding me? And here comes Dan, because Capital One, it's the Capital One Orange Bowl. I'm with Orange Bowl. I have my little cousin. I don't have this dude. I have my little cousin who she doesn't, a girl recording for me. The audio is out of control. We're so high, amped up high up on the audio. It's ridiculous. I go, Dan, real quick for, for the YouTube, man. Can I get you? Okay. The guy next to me, the, the guy, his handler didn't realize that I captured, that I kidnapped him. I go, dude, I hit the camera and I went, what's up everybody? It's your coach. I'm Cuban, but I'm from Miami. Number one guy for us. This guy's like a pope. What's up everybody? It's your coach. Listen, I'm Cuban from Miami. This guy's like our Pope. Dan, how does it feel to be in an event like this now? First question to ease him up and the second question, which hit him hard. Dude, what advice do you have for the parents out there that want what you have, man, that arm, that thing, but they don't have that. What advice do you have? Immediately the guy talks about his dad. No, nothing, nothing you're born with. You gotta work at it, but I was blessed with talent to do it. And my father was a big influence on me as a young kid. And I was blessed, you know, he's not with us anymore, but I was blessed to have a man like him in my life. That Reno's six foot four, still looks like a monster, right? But I got him. And I learned there that my connection, not only is it with people, but it's that father-son relationship. That's gonna be my key. And how ironic that mine was a complete disaster, even though my dad wanted and my dad was present. And I'm one of the few guys that probably wishes their dad was never around. Boom, there we go. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I cut it there. Look at all the things that happened just because I kept moving. I kept moving. I didn't stop. I didn't let one person stop my dream. I didn't let one person ruin my flow, ruin my vibe. That's the key. That's how you know you're passionate about something. And that's your play is if people can tell you no, people are gonna bullshit you, people are gonna say, yeah, yeah, do nothing. But if you keep going, you'll get there. I'll see you on the other side. It's your coach. Remember, at the end of the day, keep going hard and do your thing.